does your car matter in real estate, right? Driving an Escalade, a Lamborghini, a Nissan, a Subaru, does it really affect you? Can it work for you? Can it work against you? I'm gonna break it down in this video for you. For example, for example, right here, I have a 2003 Escalade that I just bought. And over here, I have a 2015 Lamborghini that I bought uh, almost a year ago now, okay? Let's look at these two. Now, if I pull up with this, I have people that'll argue, oh, you're a show off and people are gonna look down on you. And if you pull up to a $300,000 house, they're gonna be pissed and think that you're some hotshot. That's false. And at the same time, pulling up in this, people are gonna be like, oh, well, they're gonna think it's an old car and you don't have money. That's also false, okay? Before this video even begins, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to stop real fast and comment below what car you're driving. Right? I have another announcement for you at the end, but here in the beginning, I want you to post what car you're currently driving and also what your goal is for the next year or a couple years for that next car that you want to get. All right. Welcome back everybody. This is BC. So uh, now that we're back in the office, I'm going to explain to you the truth behind this whole thing about cars. And I want to be the voice of reason finally and give you the absolute most simple explanation as to why your car doesn't really matter. Okay. I give you two examples here in the beginning about people thinking you're a hot shot with the Lamborghini or people looking down upon you maybe for a Cadillac or a Honda, whatever it is. Look, there's always gonna be the exception to the rule, guys. Meaning, there's always gonna be a small portion of people that will hire you because of the Lamborghini or repel you because of the Lamborghini and vice versa. People who will look down on you for the Honda, people who won't care. Look, I know people who are broke, I know people who are filthy rich. Some of the filthy rich people drive around Hondas and some of the broke people drive cars that are probably way out of their budget that they got and shouldn't have gotten, okay? So you have people everywhere. Now the majority of people are gonna fall into the category of not caring, okay? So if you're a realtor or you're a business person even outside of real estate, understand that the car that you drive does not matter. Now if you have an older model or you tend to be more conservative with your cars, make sure it's clean, make sure it's not messy, wash it, shine the tires, make it look presentable. Just like if you put on a suit or your clothes, shine your shoes, press your clothes, make sure it's not wrinkly, look sharp. Very basic, very simple, okay? Now, let's say you're somebody who is watching this and now you fall on either side of the coin. Maybe you have a fancy car and you're kind of self-conscious because people who shouldn't be giving you advice are giving you advice. Or you have a really crappy car that's more beat up, you're a newer agent, or you're going through a financial struggle right now. Okay, I'm gonna address both of them. First, I'm gonna address the guy having a financial struggle. Look, when I started in real estate, I had a Nissan Versa 2011 or something like that. I thought it was horrendous, I thought it was ugly, but I knew that, hey, we all start somewhere. Now me, being a little bit self-conscious at the time because I wasn't at the level mentally that I am now, what I would do is when I pulled up uh, to a listing appointment or with a buyer, uh, what I did was I parked the car two or three houses down so it wasn't so obvious that I was driving that car, right? Not to say that I was ashamed, but you know, I, I parked it a couple you know, houses down just so I didn't feel bad, right? So if you're somebody who still hasn't accepted the fact that the car doesn't matter and you want some preventative measures, do that, right? Offer for them to drive you around if you're with a buyer, right? And you can sit in the back seat and talk to them, right? If you go to a listing appointment, same thing. Park two or three houses down and understand that if you invite them to your office or you go meet them at their house, you have the opportunity to quote, hide your car. Now, that's the beginning. Obviously, later on, you need to understand it doesn't matter, right? As I said, there's multi-millionaires and billionaires who drive around very cheap cars like Priuses and you have really nothing to worry about, but if you're still super self-conscious about it, just park a couple houses down or down the street, all right? Now, for those of you who are in the category of having what you consider a fancy car, and maybe you're a little bit self-conscious because your market is a little bit lower, uh, maybe like 100, 200,000, and your car is 50, 60, 70, 80,000, maybe $100,000, or you have this negative stigma thinking people are gonna think you're a hot shot or that you're showing off, understand that a car itself isn't good or bad, and it's not showing off, it's just a car. The human element added into it is what either makes it showing off or bragging or not, okay? I have a fucking smoking, sexy Lamborghini. That's a fact. But do you see me throwing it in your face all the time? No. I mean, look at the last 30 videos on my channel and I might have talked about it once or twice, but you haven't seen it, okay? Same thing when I'm with a client. I don't like 
park the Lambo in their driveway. I'm like, oh, hey, did you see my car? No, I'll pull up, park in front of the house, get out, and I go. And unless they bring up the Lamborghini, I'm not going to bring it up unless we start talking about cars or something like that. Okay? So understand that even if you're not too into cars or you're like me, you're a car nut, it doesn't matter. Understand that that was an accomplishment for you. You got it for a reason. You don't get an expensive car for no reason. Now, if you only got it to show off, that's your mistake. That's wrong. Now, if you're using it as a business move because you know it's an element of prestige, it's a rolling status symbol, you got a Rolls Royce, a Bentley, or a high trim Lexus or BMW, that's fine. Now, you're in the category of strategic. Just don't rub it in people's faces. Don't be obnoxious. It's really that simple. This isn't some difficult formula. What you need to do is understand who you're getting information from. The majority of you either falling on the side of being broke with a bad car or having some money and having a nice car, you're getting information from bottom feeders who are idiots. Okay? Take some lessons and advice from the successful people like myself. I've had nothing but great experiences with both a shitty car and a great car. So that's why I can sit here today on video and tell you it does not matter. Period. Okay? What's more important is your demeanor behind the car. When you pull up in a bad car, are you ashamed? Are you embarrassed? If you are, that's gonna come across when you're speaking to people and in your presence. Or on the flip side, do you have a nice car and you're trying to downplay it and make yourself smaller? That will also show up and it'll make you look unconfident, unprofessional, and like a non-expert. Car or no car, bad car, nice car, it's irrelevant, ladies and gentlemen, because if you're in real estate, what is it about? you delivering as a real estate agent, whether helping a buyer or a seller, period. Stop worrying about cars and this and that. If you're a car nut like me, cool, get whatever you want. If you want to strategically get a car to wrap that's a nice car, great. If you have a bad car right now, you're gonna make some more money, go hustle and make some money, period. That's really what it's about, ladies and gentlemen. It's not here nor there, it's not good or bad, it just is. The person behind driving the car is ultimately more important, right? Because we've seen people who are awesome who drive shitty cars, and we've seen some shitty people who drive awesome cars. You've seen both sides of the coin. You can draw it from experience, and you know, okay? If you ever are doing something and you think it's bragging, you probably are, okay? So those are just some basic tips for you guys, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I really think this topic is irrelevant. I still get questions every single day about it. And my last piece of advice is focus on the relevant stuff, focus on your skills, focus on helping people, focus on being an expert at the real estate industry. Stop worrying about all this wishy-washy shit on the outside. It doesn't matter, okay? Your client's not gonna choose you because of your car. And if there is that instance, it's gonna be one out of 100 or one out of 1,000, in which case you have nothing to worry about because if you lose that one client to me because I have a Lambo, I'm sure in another instance they're gonna pick you over something that I can't control or something that suddenly put me at a disadvantage like this shirt. You know what, we're not gonna go with Brian. He has an ugly lime green shirt. We're gonna go with you, man. Doesn't matter, you win some, you lose some. Okay, that's it for this one. I'm gonna wrap it up here, uh, boys and girls. A couple quick announcements. My new product, it's gonna be a multi-part series. However, it's gonna be called The Ultimate Real Estate Agent. I'm releasing that April 1st, so stay tuned for that. I'm gonna do a promotional video and all that other stuff. Secondly, Modern Success, my personal coaching program that I've created for you. Uh, it's only 97 bucks a month. Information's in the description. It's so much, it's so big. I keep adding more and more stuff to it. Testimonials keep pouring in. Um, it really is a one-stop shop for everything you need out of life. Additionally, I'm gonna be doing another event April 22nd, 23rd, and 24th here in LA. Um, it's gonna be called Money, Magic, and Mating. I'm gonna be linking up with Arash, Vince, uh, Frank. It's gonna be a phenomenal event. I'm gonna be in Boston uh, the second week of May to do an event with uh, DNA, Dave and Arthur from DNA Realty over in the East Coast. Shout out to them. And we have a couple more things cooking. I'm doing another event with Pablo probably in June or July. Another event with Arash as well. So we have plenty of stuff going on. The podcast has been temporarily disabled that I did with Arash. We're going to reignite it here in a month or two. So stay tuned for that. And uh, last but not least, if you want to leave any comments below about any future video ideas that you would like to see, or any suggestions along that lines, you're more than welcome to do something. I also wanna hear in the comments section below what car you drive and also what you plan to get, because I'm pretty sure everyone is gonna be excited to see if you have a goal or what car you're driving now, because it's gonna put things in perspective for a lot of people and help them tremendously. Okay, make sure that you like the video, subscribe, and I will see you on the next one.